What we're looking at right now is the self-service homepage. Once the university switches over to self-service completely, you'll be provided with a link to the login page. You'll need to use your single sign-on credentials to access self-service. Once you've logged in, you'll find that there are two ways to navigate self-service. You can either use the tiles on the homepage that are lighting up in blue right now, or you can use the side menu on the left-hand side. You can hover over each item to see the name of that menu, or you can see the menu names in full by clicking on the hamburger menu at the top. I recommend using the side menu because there are a few items that do not appear on the homepage. The first topic I'll be going over is how to advise students. Within the daily work menu, there's an advising menu for faculty and staff to review their advisees' academic progress. So if we click on advising and then advising overview, we'll be taken to a page that initially displays all the students that you have been assigned as the advisor. You can also search for a student, whether they're your advisee or not, by name or ID number using the search bar at the top of the page. Once you've found the student you need to advise, click on View Details. If the student has any holds on their account, a pop-up message in the top right will appear. Additionally, you can click on the notifications bar to expand it and view these holds. The department the student should contact will be listed next to the hold. So in this case, the student has a web registration hold and they're being told they need to meet with their academic advisor to get that removed. If we click on notifications one more time, it will collapse. Underneath this, you'll see many tabs that can be used to gain a well-rounded view on the student. At this point in time, you'll only be using the following tabs. You'll be using course plan, progress slash degree audit, test scores, unofficial transcript, grades, and remove hold. The remaining tabs are used for student planning. Now, student planning is a part of self-service, and it's a powerful tool that allows students to create academic plans for their entire degree. They don't just plan courses for the upcoming semester, they actually map out their entire academic career. Vancouver students have been using this for years, but there's only a small group of students using student planning right now on the New Jersey campuses. We'll be rolling this out to more New Jersey programs in the fall, and at that time, advisors and students will receive additional training for student planning. So in the course plan tab, you'll see details on the courses the student has taken or is going to register for. Unless you are part of a program using student planning, you won't take any action on this page. You will simply use it for viewing purposes. You can toggle between semesters using the left and right arrows. So if we use the left arrow, you'll see in fall 2021, the student registered for two classes. Now you can tell because of the check mark and the word registered or completed underneath the course. And completed just means that they've received a final grade already in that class. If we move ahead, clicking the right arrow to spring 22, you'll see that there is no registered written underneath these courses. That means these courses have only been planned by the student. They have not completed their registration yet. You can also view this using the calendar tab. The progress slash degree audit tab may be the most important tab as it shows you the student's degree audit. You'll see details on their current program and the progress they've made towards completing their degree. As you scroll down, you can see any action a student has taken towards completing their requirements. The colors will change depending on the state of that particular requirement. So red indicates that a, a course has not been started. Yellow means that a course has been planned and green means that a course is in progress or completed. If you'd like to see what it would look like if the student switched majors, you can scroll up and click on view a new program. Then we would select the program. We're actually working with enrollment services right now 
to clean up the program name so they'll be more specific. So for instance, if I search for accounting, and I scroll down here, you'll see it includes the campus, the academic level, and the program name. So I'm gonna select one and click view program. Once you load this onto the student's record, you'll be able to see how the courses they've already taken or planned line up with the new program's requirements. If we wanted to remove this, we just click the X up at the top. Now we'll skip over this course catalog tab because there is a separate place to search the course catalog without being inside a student's record. So let's move forward to test scores. This tab will show you any official test scores that have been submitted to FDU and recorded in Colleague. The unofficial transcript tab will allow you to download a copy of the student's unofficial transcript. So you just have to click on it once and it'll automatically start the download. And if I click it, it'll open up and this is what it would look like. You can view midterm and final grades broken down by semester in the grades tab. If we click on a semester, it'll expand and show any grades that have been recorded. If we click it again, it'll collapse. The remove hold tab allows advisors to remove web registration holds from their advisees records. You will need to select the hold you wish to remove and click remove selected. If you would like to search the course catalog, you can do so by using the link within the academics menu. So we'll go to academics and we'll click on course catalog. As you can see, there are a lot of options to narrow this search down by, but we can also filter again after our initial results are generated. So in this case, I'm just gonna pick a term and a subject and then click search. Like I mentioned before, we can further refine our search using the filters on the left-hand side. So I will scroll down and I'll pick the undergraduate level. I can hide the filters to get the course catalog to fill the entire screen. You'll find course restrictions and notes within the section information column. So for instance, this section right here has a restriction that it is open to students in the honors program only. The next thing I'm going to show you is for faculty who need to view their roster, verify enrollment, or submit midterm and final grades. They'll do so by going to the daily work menu, clicking on faculty, and then clicking on faculty overview. On this page, you'll see all the courses that you are currently assigned as the instructor. So click on the text to select a course. The roster tab shows you the list of students currently enrolled in your course. You can download the list to Excel using the export button and then clicking download CSV. You can also email the entire group by clicking on email all. If you click copy to clipboard, this will copy all the email addresses to your clipboard and then you can paste them in a new email. When enrollment services alerts you that it is time to verify enrollment, you'll do so by coming to the same page. Go through the list of students and check whether they attended or never attended using the radio buttons all the way on the right here. Once you have verified the entire roster, you must click submit attendance to officially submit the enrollment verification. Once you've submitted, you cannot make any changes. 
So it's really important to confirm your selections are correct before submitting. If you do need to make a change, you must contact enrollment services. You can refer to the top banner for all contact information regarding these processes. So for submitting grades, we would switch over to the grading tab. Let's go ahead and select the midterm progress report sub tab. For students who need a midterm grade, select the grade from the drop down menu. By the time we go live with this, there will be an additional column telling you who requires a midterm grade. You are able to fill in midterm grades for all students, but if you want to fill it in for students where it is required, you'll be able to do so easily once that column is put into place. Now, midterm grading does not require you to submit the grades when you are done. They are automatically saved once you've chosen a grade. Final grading is done in the same grading tab. However, you'll need to select the final grade sub tab. This page will also be changing slightly once we go live with it. There will be a submit final grades button at the top of the page. You will need to go through the entire roster and assign a final grade to all students using the drop down menu. Once everyone has a grade, and only when everyone has a grade, can you click to submit these grades. You will not be able to submit grades if any final grades are missing. And once submitted, you'll know you were successful because a pop up confirmation will appear. To look up FDU's grading guidelines, you simply need to go to daily work, and then click on grading guidelines. This will take you out to FDU's website. You can also get to the change of grade sites using the links below here. I'm now gonna show you how to look up budgets. Running budget reports through self-service has been live for almost a year now, but I'll quickly run through the process in case you have not seen it or have not used it before. So within daily work, you'll navigate to financial management and then click on finance query. Using the blue filter button, you can input the criteria for your search. If you leave it blank, the results will include every account that you have access to. So you can fill in as many or as few of the fields as you like. So I'm gonna start with just an identifier. And then I'm gonna click apply filter. The fiscal year up at the top can be changed as well as the dates within that fiscal year. The report can be exported to an Excel file for further review using export download CSV. You can also drill into the rows to get more details and click on any documents. So I'm gonna show you an example using the specific object code. I click on the row, I'll get more details. I see there's some documents. I can click on the documents and I'll get more information on that as well. Okay, and the last topic I'm going to go over is how to set up your FDU alert. You'll navigate to user options and then click on FDU alert. Fill in the information, make any changes, and then click submit when you're done. So I'll just make one quick change. I'll click submit. And the information has been saved successfully.